Hello, my name is Michelle. Welcome to my channel, Michelle's Melancholia. This month I will be reading the science fiction classic The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert A. Heinlein. And because I am not very familiar with this genre, I first did what I always do when I feel out of my depth, research. Robert A. Heinlein defines science fiction as Realistic speculation about possible future events based solidly on adequate knowledge of the real world, past and present, and on a thorough understanding of the nature and significance of the scientific method. And after reading this definition, I thought, hey, maybe this won't be so bad. I am, after all, a scientist. And I don't know if I've mentioned this in the channel before, but I work as a researcher in a neuroscience department. And so I looked back to my recent encounters with science fiction literature. And as you can see, I usually read science fiction when it's mixed with horror, because horror is my favorite genre to read. But I also noticed another pattern. I tend to read science fiction about or involving biological systems, and that's probably because my area of expertise is in the natural sciences, so I think I just feel very comfortable in this realm of fiction. However, any science fiction books involving physics or engineering or space in general frankly intimidate me. But for some reason, that is exactly what I will be reading this month. On Luna, an open penal colony of the 21st century, a revolution is being plotted. The conspirators are a strange assortment, an engaging jack of all trades, his luscious blonde girlfriend and a lonely talking computer. Their aim? The overthrow of the hated authority. But things don't go according to plan and their independence may ultimately prove harder to maintain than it was to seize. Great, so also war, the other topic that intimidates me in literature. <sighs> Fortunately, I will be reading this as part of a group read over at Criminalist Discord channel, so hopefully I will have plenty of support. There are a number of people there that are very experienced science fiction readers, so hopefully they can provide some encouragement uh, if things are not going very well. But now it's time to start reading and I will check back with you later. Okay, hello, let's talk about this book. I am about a quarter through and okay, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you what my experience with this book has been. It's Tuesday today and I started reading this on Friday evening and that was probably a really bad idea because all Thursday and Friday I was at a science conference thingy that lasted all day, so my brain was fried. I came home and I was like, okay, I'm going to start reading this book. And then I read one page, literally one page, and I closed it and I was like, no, DNF, I'm so sorry, I cannot do it. Um, but then Saturday morning, when I was a bit more rested, I decided that it would be only fair if I gave it a proper shot. So I read a couple of chapters and I really started liking it and now I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot so I think I'm going to keep going. So let me tell you what my issue was. Um, it's told from the perspective of uh, the main character whose name is Manuel and he speaks in a very strange way like for example um, he skips over many articles I think it's called so instead of saying I'm wearing a hat he'll be like I'm wearing a hat and uh, I open door and things like that. So when you're reading multiple paragraphs of that, it starts to get a bit tiresome. So I was really struggling with that. Luckily, the first thing that happens in the book is uh, Manuel, or Manny, as he's called, he meets a computer who has become sentient. And that hooked me because I am really intrigued by this idea of can artificial intelligence become real intelligence, can machines become sentient, can computers come to life? 
So, because that topic really interests me, um, that hooked me right from the start. One thing that I thought was brilliant, and I don't know if it was done on purpose, I'd like to think it was, is that the main character's name, as I said, is Manuel. So, when he's first uh, talking with the computer, the computer refers to him as man, and I thought that was really funny because obviously it's like the duality between man and machine, but also man can be short for Manuel. So I wasn't sure which one it was or if it was meant to be both or what was the deal with that. But I don't know, it's just like a little detail that I really enjoyed. Okay, but I haven't said what the book is about. Basically, from what I understand, this is about a colony of people that live in the moon and... I think this colony first started for like inmates or it was like a prison but I think time has passed and if I understand correctly now it's just like um, regular people because now uh, families are established etc etc so what happens here is that people work at the moon and then they sell things to earth so basically they provide the earth with the resources they need for people over there to survive but the relationship between the moon, which is called Luna, and the Earth, which is called Terra, is kind of like exploitative for the people on the moon. So there is a revolution brewing because there is a group of people that think that the work that is uh, done in Luna should benefit the people that live there. Um, so they are unhappy with the way things are run and they are planning a revolution. So for basically by chance... Uh, Manuel comes across some of these people and he basically gets roped in into leading this revolution and he has this amazing idea that the computer that has become sentient which is called Mike can help them and even though I'm not like super super interested in politics or that was not my main point of interest in this book I actually found it quite enjoyable to read about how these people are like really strategizing and then they get the computer to help them decide what are their odds of winning the revolution uh, and also they were talking about like what the best strategy would be you know um, to build the network of revolutionaries that they are um, gathering so even though I didn't expect to like that part, I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed their conversations about it. What I don't get is how some <laughs> sometimes science fiction writers can imagine these crazy things that would happen in the future, but they just can't imagine women just being normal people. I feel like the, the woman character here, she's very strange and I don't really understand if it's just the author's point of view that's kind of a bit sexist or it's not ill intention but that's just how it comes across i'm not sure i i haven't made up my mind what i did enjoy very much was her interaction with the computer because of course the computer is learning about being human through his interactions with humans so when he meets Wyoming, that is a woman, and she expresses her desire to talk to another woman, the computer basically becomes a woman, and uh, his name changes from Mike to Michelle. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that that was really, really funny. Also, uh, I don't often come across books where there's characters named Michelle, and I like that because my name is Michelle, obviously. Uh, so, as always, please recommend me books where there are characters called Michelle. And extra points if the characters are, like, a good character. Okay, so last thing, which is not about the plot, is that I usually speak about how I hate reading from um, hardcovers because I find it really uncomfortable. But this one, I love this one. Um, first of all, because it has no dust jacket, so I don't have to deal with it like falling off and things like that. And the creases where the the covers um, open are like super, like, you know, the groove is quite deep. So it, you know, it kind of like bends easily. And the other thing that I love is that um, it 
it's kind of like a smaller size than a typical heart pack so literally you know it fits perfectly in my hand so that's like very very satisfying i like that recently there was a tag going around booktube where you had to describe like your perfect book and i I just kept thinking that I don't think I have a perfect book. I, I, I don't care about format and things like that. But as for physical, the physical materials or whatever of the book, this would be my perfect book. Okay, so I think I've started rumbling. So I'm going to keep reading. And when I am about halfway through, I will check back with you. And we will see if I'm still enjoying this. Good morning. I'm going to be reading for a while here on my sofa this morning. I'm about halfway through the book and I still I'm still enjoying it. Particularly I like the conversations in which the characters are strategizing on how to carry out the revolution. I think uh, most of it was interesting and also like little snippets here and there. Uh, where basically the author just explains what this world at the lunar colony is like and what life is like over there. That's pretty interesting, but story-wise, there is really only <laughs> so much uh, entertainment value for me personally there because, I, yeah, as I said, I'm not really into, like, um, war or, like, political um, conflict in fiction generally so basically at the halfway point of the book they've um i think they've completed the revolution then there's a whole other part of the book of about what happens after the revolution and i kind of feel like i could just stop reading at the halfway point uh but i'm gonna keep going and see um if it gets more entertaining towards the later part and uh, so so far it's been interesting i'm not having like the most fun reading this book but i am enjoying kind of like the science fiction elements that i don't typically read there is one part that i tapped here because i um quite enjoyed it so i don't uh, remember the context perfectly but i think um they are kind of like planning a part of the revolution and they need Mike, the computer, to uh, generate communications with humans, but they are trying to make him sound more like an actual person and not a computer. Um, so it says... It, oh, I'm going to read the paragraph. I used to question Mike's endless reading of fiction, wondering what notions he was getting, but turned out he got a better feeling for human life from stories than he had been able to garner from facts. Fiction gave him a gestalt of life, one taken for granted by a human. He lives it. Besides this humanizing effect, Mike's substitute for experience, he got ideas from not true data, as he called fiction, how to hide a catapult he got from Edgar Allan Poe. So I thought that was very interesting how... Uh, I've seen this discussion around about how people uh, should read more nonfiction because that's how you learn about the world, which is absolutely absolutely true. But I have also seen responses to that saying that you also learn a lot from fiction because that's the way you get to experience things that you would otherwise never experience. Uh, yeah, so I thought that paragraph was uh, particularly um, interesting to read about. So... As I said, I will continue with the second part of the book and hopefully I will make it to the end. Hi, okay, so I managed to finish part two, which means I'm like very close to the end. And I'm not gonna lie, part two was a bit of a struggle for me to get through. <laughs> At some points I was just really bored and I don't usually get bored in books even if they're like slow or too detailed but I think this was just maybe a bit just too political for me so basically part two deals more with um, how one would go about um, 
establishing the sovereignty of a new nation after a revolution. So basically the characters have to uh, now get the earth to validate them as a free nation. So there is a lot of like planning and uh, conversing with uh, authorities in earth. So it was just very slow. And to be honest, there was not much science fiction at all. I think it was just political uh, stuff that could happen anytime, anywhere. Uh, the only part that I enjoyed that was more science fiction was them dealing with the health effects of um, being in Earth after living their whole lives in the moon, where obviously the gravitational forces are much weaker. I did tab a section here that I really enjoyed, which is basically um, our main character is dealing with the uh, Earth scientists. So it's scientists from Earth that are currently working in the moon doing research or experiments there. And they are basically telling the scientists that they're going to have to stop the research because there's a revolution going on and they offer them just go go to Earth or you can stay here but you will have like limited resources and limited facilities to carry out your research. And the poor scientists, like I, I we could relate so much because they are so upset about having to stop their experiments and they're like please you don't understand how awful it is when you have to interrupt your studies. I mean, they have to do it, but I just thought that, that um, I mean, the author got the, the scientist character spot on. This is how scientists would react if they were asked to stop what they're doing. It says that the way they react, you would have thought I was about to kill his baby. He turned grey. That would stop every research, destroy priceless data, waste, oh, I don't know how much, call it a half billion dollars. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, I still have a little bit more to go. I'm not going, to, I'm very bored. I'm sorry, I'm not going to DNF this because I, I want to finish the blog and I want to finish reading this book because I, you know, I'm committed at this point. So I'll just keep going and hopefully it will get better. I did it, I finished it. <laughs> and actually, I am happy to report that the last part of the book was so much better than the second part of the book um, because it stopped being boring, basically. <laughs> um, it had a lot more action because now we have like actual war happening. So that was entertaining. And actually, I really, really liked the ending of the book. And I think a lot of it has to do with me liking the characters because I got to see the journey all the way to the end. And I just thought it was a good resolution for the whole ordeal. Now I guess I should give some final thoughts and reflections about this. Um, I definitely think that this was not the best way to start reading science fiction or to pick up like different kinds of science fiction. Um, this, I would say, is more suited to people who really know a lot and enjoy reading about history and, like, political theory, which is not me. I did like, like, the war parts, but when there was, like, action, you know? Not, like, the ins and outs of, like, uh, planning the revolution and establishing a new political and socio-economical system. <laughs> I didn't care too much about that. So will I read more science fiction? Definitely, 100% yes. I'm actually quite excited to dive into other kinds of science fiction. So please let me know what would you recommend for a newbie like me. I was thinking either like Blake Crouch or Andy Weir because they seem to be like universally loved and from what I understand they are, they are just like very entertaining books which is kind of like what I want. And as far as Robert Heinlein goes, um, I don't think I'm going to read his other books because this is like supposed to be his masterpiece but if like if this is the best I just don't think this author is for me to be honest. So I guess in conclusion, was this like an amazing reading experience? No. Am I happy I read it? Yes, very much so. And as I said, I'm excited to see what 
science fiction has for me in the future. So thank you so much for coming with me in this journey of reading science fiction, a kind of science fiction that I haven't really dived into before. And I will see you on my next video in which hopefully we will dive back into horror. But until then, goodbye.